Our story begins with a disgruntled group of assemblers. Day after day, the line fed them the old clevis pin and cotter pin combo, which made their assembly of whatchamacallits a series of frustrating missteps. So, one day on lunch break, the guys elected Earl to talk to the boss and demand change. Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Pivot Point, the leading designer and manufacturer of non-threaded fastener solutions, we're improving artificial intelligence with sensors, flying robotic bees, making hypersonic history, and getting ready to launch Gozer. Back in June of 2012, motion experts from the Bomber Group collaborated with scholars from the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at the University of Zurich to design and create the first humanoid robot that moves. Nine months later, ironically, Rollboy was born. Well built. Created. Put together. With a physique similar to that of an eight-year-old child and standing just over four feet tall, Roll Boy's movements are smooth and flowing, like human movements due to his tendon control drive technology, where joints are manipulated using plastic tendons that join the bones of the artificial skeleton together. Electric motors stretch and contract each tendon, imitating the smooth controlled muscle movement working in the human body. His programming also allows him to have touch sensitivity and face recognition. More than 100 sensors from Bomber help to simulate the human locomotor system and provide position feedback to determine and communicate the exact location of the robot's movable body parts. With this information, Rollboy's computer brain can direct and control the activity of the electric motors that stimulate muscle movement. These sensors also make it possible to shake hands with Rollboy because they are designed to detect fluid levels. When a person stands near Rollboy and reaches out a hand in greeting, the capacitive sensor located in Rollboy's palm detects the water content in the human hand and sends a message back to the robot's computer brain that a handshake is imminent. The brain then alerts Rollboy to respond appropriately by clasping his human partner's hand. Duh. Is anyone else creeped out by this? The first of six instruments is ready to be installed on GOES-R, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's next generation of geostationary operational environmental satellites. The Extreme Ultraviolet and X-ray Irradiance Sensors, or EXIS, will give scientists a greater measure of the extreme solar energy output from the sun, which can severely disrupt communications, air travel, and the performance of power grids. Scheduled to launch in 2015, GOES-R satellites are expected to more than double the clarity of today's GOES imagery and provide more atmospheric observations than current capabilities with more frequent images. According to the NOAA, extreme solar activity could wreak havoc on the U.S. and global economy, so it's critical for GOES-R to be able to monitor it. You know, come to think of it, this isn't the first time PD&D has crossed paths with Gozer. Are you a god? No? Then... On May 1st, the Boeing X-51A Waverider unmanned hypersonic vehicle achieved the longest air-breathing scramjet-powered hypersonic flight in history. The vehicle flew for a total time of more than six minutes, three and a half of which were on scramjet power at a top speed of Mach 5.1. That's somewhere around 3,366 miles per hour. That's fast. The craft was dropped from a B-52H bomber at 50,000 feet. Because the scramjet will only work at hypersonic speeds, a solid rocket booster was used to push Waverider to a speed of Mach 4.8, or about 3,100 miles per hour. After the spent booster was jettisoned, the scramjet ignited so the vehicle could reach its top speed. This successful test comes eight months after a different wave rider went out of control shortly after being released due to the faulty deployment of a control fin. This test has not only set records, but it opens the door for safer, longer lasting hypersonic, not just supersonic, transport. Things like traveling from LA to New York in under an hour or cost effective access to space and whatnot, you know, no big deal. 
Last summer, an infestation took control of the Harvard Robotics Laboratory. The situation posed no need to call an exterminator, for this demonstration featured the first controlled flight of an insect-sized robot inspired by the biology of a fly. It was the culmination of more than a decade of work led by the researchers at the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and the Wies Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering at Harvard. With submillimeter scale anatomy and two wafer-thin wings that are nearly invincible as they flap 120 times per second, the tiny device represents the cutting edge of micromanufacturing and control systems. Piezoelectric actuators power the tiny wings, and thin plastic hinges are embedded within the carbon fiber body frame to serve as joints. A delicately balanced control system commands the rotational motions in the flapping wing robots, with each wing controlled independently in real time. The robotic insects take advantage of an ingenious pop-up manufacturing technique in which sheets of various laser-cut materials are layered and sandwiched together into a thin, flat plate that folds up like a child's pop-up book into a complete electromechanical structure. RoboB could be used in a number of applications, but the key takeaways result from the materials, fabrication techniques, and components that might one day prove to be even more significant. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire. listened to the guys and hired the engineers at Pivot Point to solve the heretofore fastener conundrum. Using mathematical equations beyond the comprehension of most mortals, a device called the Slick Pin was devised. Slick as in self-locking implanted cotter pin. Soon the line was feeding the assemblers the new Slick Pin Frustration gave way to jubilation, and hard hats were traded in for party hats, not to mention balloons, confetti, and kazoos. So, turn your assembly into revelry with slick pins from Pivot Point. <laughs>